ones uh, do people get see the crazy up and running. Um, so we're going to give a uh, hopefully brief presentation on the status of uh, Wikimedia in South Africa, uh, where we've come over the past years, where we are now, um, how things have evolved. Um, need a couple more? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start from the beginning, um, sort of the time before I really started at, at Wikimedia South Africa. Um, Ian is in the room, you yeah, know, we'll remember those days. Um, when, when Wikimedia South Africa was, I suppose, first conceived of and started, it was sort of been sort of far back as 2007, 2006, is that right? Uh, around then. So, I mean, so South Africa, uh, the Wikimedia chapter here in South Africa has been sort of uh, an incubation for quite a long time. It's been sort of students building up and developing for quite a long period of time. And then 2010, um, is when things really got got rolling and people really came together to form a chapter and we really got uh, organized and it was, it was 2012 was when we first really got registered as a chapter. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Don't don't don't, don't quote me on that big I did. Yeah, I remember that because it's our, our company code. So 2012. And, um, and since then we've we've really we've really grown. We had our had our fall downs and and, and our successes, some failings and successes as any chapter has over the years. Um, but um, but I think we're now in a much stronger and better place than we ever have been. Um, I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit. I'm gonna talk um, so start start talking on one of the projects we started on quite early, or at least I, I was sort of quite involved in quite early on, and that was our good for Wikimania. And first 2014, although we, we chose to withdraw that vote because we realized at the time we simply lacked the resources to make a bit like that happen. There just weren't enough of us to get everything done. Um, but in that process back in 2014, um, when I was sort of scouting out locations, um, talking to people about how to put together an event like this, in particular, who should be our keynote speakers? I'll end up talking to a bunch of organizations, one of whom happened to be Open Society Foundation in South Africa. And um, so I walked to their offices, we had this conversation of specifically about who, we sh who I should invite to Wikimania should we, should we have it. And the conversation ends, the meeting ends, with a request uh, by Open Society Foundation if, if we would like to take their money if they could give us a donation, um, I was a bit caught, caught off guard because uh, it obviously wasn't, wasn't why we were there. Um, and the only thing that I could think that we as an organization really needed, and this is very fresh in our memories of you know, our efforts of hosting in this event, was we needed logistical capability, we needed core support. And at the time we had no access to funding to hire a full-time person. So that was a very interesting case of where we adopted a project and we ran it. And although we were unsuccessful in our bid to gain Wikimania, and I'm sure we'll, we'll bid again in the future, the Cape Town's going to have a try. Um, it took us on a great journey. And it took us on a journey that allowed us to achieve many other things. And, and this is why I suggest to, to every chapter, at least my advice would be to don't be shy to engage in a project. Because often it'll take you on a path and take you uh, to other things, to other successes, which are completely unforeseen at the time. So, with the, with the Open Society Foundation request that they trust making a submission to access funding to hire a, a, a core person, a core team member, and we were successful. And today we have Teresa with us, who is instrumental in organizing with the Endarpa, and without her, um, this entire event would not have been possible. I would quickly like to give a, a shout out to Teresa, as well as everyone else in the organizing team of Wikiendaba, to say thank you very much for making Wikiendaba happen. But I'll just want to come to this this item on how the chapter was formulated. Um, this is really how it ended up precipitating in 2011, uh, when the group became much more formal and uh, 
back then we had Ian, uh, who is sitting with us today. Um, and we also had Tobias, um, who assisted with the um, the, the, the agreements and uh, the legal stuff for the for the chat. Say hello to Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what we have or what we've inherited or are running today is not something that started with us or started yesterday. It was years and years of different groups of people working together to try and put together a chapter uh, which we have today. It was formally recognized as a chapter in 2012 by the Wikimedia Foundation and uh, in the same year it was re registered as a not-for-profit uh, organization in South Africa which were two very important um, steps for getting the chapter going legally in South Africa. Um, I just want to say at this point that um, our next sort of steps in terms of getting organized logistically here, uh, legally, is to get registered as a non-for-profit in the eyes of the tax man. So now we're registered as a non-for-profit in the eyes of the government as an as organized body. But um, in order to get um, a tax status so that we can claim back rebates and uh, become a better prospect to donate money to, uh, we need to get registered with the tax man and then we can apply for something called Section 89. I'm not going to go into all boring South African legal tax codes, but that means that we can give tax rebates to organizations that give tax donations. So that's that's the path we want to go down to. Uh, I don't know So the, the, the summary that all the uh, working groups present today is take heart. It, it will take many, many months to become a proper functioning chapter yes, um, in, in the eyes of Wikimedia Foundation, especially in the eyes of your own governments in your own uh, country. But uh, it is something that must be done. I mean, the, the end justifies for me the means of what you need to do to get there. So we have, you'll have a lot of sleepless nights, I can promise you that. So what have we done since then? Uh, let me give Douglas a chance to start with uh, one of our most exciting projects we've done uh, that we're doing third year in a row this year. I should talk about uh, the Wikilux Monuments Project, of course. Um, so Wikilux Monuments was uh, first brought over to South Africa in 2012 by a Belgian, no less, um, one of our directors named Martin. Um, so um, and he, he suggested that we embark on this project. And this actually was truly one of the, probably the first big project we as a chapter initiated. Um, up until then, we were sort of skittish about really doing anything big. Uh, so this is the first big one. And the first time is always the hardest, I have to say. The second time is much easier. Um, because by the second time around, you sort of, you know the systems, you know what needs to be done. You've really done a lot of the, the, the background work. You know who to contact. You know the type of stuff that you're going to write about, that you know what to say about the event, uh, who to inform about, etc., etc., etc. Also, the writing in the grant application is, is easier because now you've got some experience with it, and you've got a legacy. Um, so you also got some metrics to measure uh, successes and failures, which is always a good thing. So, uh, Wiki Lost Monuments first year, we had about uh, 1,850 or so photographs submitted by about 128 individuals. Um, last year was both more successful and less successful. It was more successful because we got uh, well over, gosh, we, we got 28% more photographs than we than we um, uh, anticipated, than we than we planned to. So we set up what we believe is a very ambitious goal: 5,000 photographs for 2013 Wikilux monuments, and we got 6,400. Bit over there, actually. Um, so great success, but only by 89 individuals. So we, it was a bit of a failure in terms of uh, participants. This year I really want to focus on increasing the quality of the photographs and increasing the number of participants. So I'm actually not too concerned about the number of photographs. If, if we were to get, say, 3,000 this year, I would be less concerned. So long as quality goes up and the participants go up. But that's Wiki Loves Monuments. And I'll go on to the next one, which is um, uh, our bid for Wikimania in Cape Town, um, which was unsuccessful, unfortunately. Uh, but um, Really given you the silver lining story of that, took us on that, that great adventure. Um, so I don't regret it at all. Also, um, we've, we've made many great contacts and many great um, with, with many people 
across South Africa. So now we're much better connected to Creative Commons, we're much better connected to Silicon Valley, uh, open, uh, the open technology sector in South Africa and Cape Town specifically. So it's, it's actually really helped us. So although we, we failed in our objective, it was actually a very successful project for us to initiate, to, to embark on. Um, so I'm actually very happy that we did it. And anyway, uh, last one, but it doesn't mean we can't do it again. Um, and then the wiki meetup. So now that sort of a lot of our time has been freed up, or some of some of our, at least my time has been freed up, um, I can now sort of focus on meetups, on these sort of more grassroots, community-driven things where uh, we can meet Wikipedians and other members of the open source community face to face. So every three months, I'm involved in a project to actually organize a wiki meetup in Cape Town, first Sunday of every third month. Uh, hopefully, as as you know, we get into the stream of things and, and it becomes a more regular thing, I'd like to see that as become every two months and then every month, so that we sort of, uh, uh, our, our meetups reflect more of what standard in say, the United Kingdom, which is which is really where I, I got the inspiration to do this from. Um, like there's something else. Oh, yes, there is one more thing. Um, so one thing at least that I've been embarking on a lot more recently um, in Cape Town is doing editathons. Um, sort of really inspired by some of the people I met in Berlin and the editathons they organized. And at the moment, we're in the process of organizing two editathons. One, which I have um, very high hopes for, is the uh, librarian's editathon. That's where we, we, we really set a date, we really set up a, uh, an understanding of the librarians, society. librarians, not librarians, not librarians. <laughs> um, they're not from librarian, Liberia. I'm just pronouncing this word, how are you there? Uh, anyway, folks from libraries. Um, so they'll be editing articles on local libraries in the Western Cape and mapping them. At the moment, if you want to find a library in the Western Cape, what's up? In general, very hard to do. Quality of the information there, is non-existent, especially if you're looking on the government website, which is the only place where you can find it. So we want to solve that. And the library and the like the folks at the libraries are very excited and very interested in doing this. The second one is um, the book lunch. So or the literature festival, South African Literature Festival. So every year there's a there's, there's a book there's a bookstore in South Africa in Cape Town, which is very, very famous naturally, called the Book Lab. And they've got a fantastic connection. So, for example, whenever a famous person or politician of any variety wants to launch a book in South Africa, typically the book lounge is the first place to go to. And they pull out all the stops, they pull out all the big guns, all the really important people go there. Anyway, one of the functions, that, one of the things they do every year is organize that literature festival. And uh, we've been able to convince them that it would be a good idea to organize an editathon for that literature festival, both to increase the number and quality of edits on South African literature topics, but also, there's, I feel there's a natural synergy between people who write for a living and want to write for a living and contribute to Wikipedia. Um, also, the quality, just generally on scientific topics, isn't as good as I would like it to be, it isn't as good as many of us would like it to be, and there's a lot of room for expansion. So, they seem very excited about that, and I'm actually very ambitious, very excited for that project as well. That will happen in September, so it's just going to overlap with the last moment, so it's going to be a bit of a, a manic month for me. I'm going to hand over to Demi to talk about his exciting projects here in Germany. Um, before I talk about, about the exciting projects here in Germany, which is cooler than Cape Town. I must go back to um, one of the successes that uh, Douglas really, really did well um, with Wikilove's monuments, and that is the exhibition that was held. Last month, so no, perhaps you should actually tell us about that. Yeah, thanks, thanks, I completely forgot about that. So it's actually, um, it was an idea that been stewing on my mind. So this is, a, this, is a good idea, this is a good example of how quickly you can turn over an idea um, or, or a project. So Wiki loves monuments, right? We generate a lot of content, we generate a lot of photographs of Wiki loves monuments. And it occurred to me that um, one, a great way to raise the profile of this event uh, would be to have an exhibition of it. I, mean, I didn't know the details at the time of you know when I would do it, the photographs I would feature, all that sort of stuff, who would host it. But we did at the time, we we're very fortunate in 2013, we, we got a, a very new partner, um, Orms, who's you know, also probably be the, the largest um, photographic retailers in South Africa, very highly regarded. They 
uh, very graciously just printed for us about 10 or 20 photographs for free and framed them for us at cost, uh, which meant that we had no concept of their true cost, which is why when we sold them, we completely undersold them. Um, little did I know that uh, the price that we were selling them for, uh, to raise funds for the, um, for the Wikimedia South Africa, was um, basically a third of what they would cost if you actually went to the store to go get them, to get them done professionally. So everyone who bought this picture's got, got a real bargain, very good bargain. Um, but anyway, so they, they, they had produced all these pictures for us. So we now had pictures which we could display, and we did, some of the, we did display some of the pictures at the awards ceremony uh, last year. Um, but you know, they were just hanging around in my apartment. You know, I, I can only hang up so many things on my wall, and anyway, why should I get to keep them? It's a, it's a, it's a Wikimedia South Africa acid. Um, so I organized this exhibition, and for a time, didn't have a, didn't have a venue. And then, um, because we, we rented out like an office share, because we didn't need a, a full-time office space. Um, we only needed a, one desk, one day a week. So we just went to an office share, saved us a ton of cash, very, very good way for us to go. But it also allows us, it also connected us with many interesting people. And one of the interesting people that um, it connected us, us up with, he organized an event in Cape Town called First Thursdays. First Thursday, every month, all the design studios in Cape Town open up their doors, host an exhibition. Now, not all design studios have something to feature. So he knew of such a design studio, you know, they desperate to feature something, and he said, oh, well, if you've got these fantastic photographs, would you be interested in um, putting these things up on display? Absolutely. Great, you've got one week to make it happen. So <laughs> I had one week to run around, get all the photographs done, make sure they're mounted, make sure, or be secure wine, I managed to get free wine. So thank you very much to Crandall Wine for making the donation. Uh, I kept everyone well during the event. Um, we also got a couple other freebies as well, so I managed to secure those at the last minute. And it was a great success. We must have had about 50 or so people come through the doors and we were featured um, as sort of the event of First Thursdays that week and a couple other publications. It really well. I, I wrote it all up in Unmentor, so if you, if, you, if you want to read up about it, you can find more there. Even made a video as well. Well, thank you. Ooh, that's a lot of things happening in Cape Town. What about Joe Right. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, there is something happening in Jobek. Uh, yeah. Just a couple of flat attractions, you know, cool things like that. But um, before I get to Jobek, I just want to talk, uh, touch a little bit again on Wikipedia Zero and this uh, medical school in Cape Town called Sinajongo, who managed to lobby for uh, free access of uh, Wikipedia through the existing uh, network providers in South Africa, which uh, one of them finally um, relented to doing that, which is MTN, albeit in a somewhat different and strange format, but it's a it's a good place to start in, and I'm sure uh, Adele will talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But we have been very happy to uh, go back to the school and keep the project going with Douglas and, and the teachers there. So that's something we're also very proud of. Okay, coming back to what we've been busy with uh, the past years in Jobek, which is Jobpedia, modeled on uh, the uh, concept of Marmothpedia in Wales, uh, came with uh, a lot of uh, challenges at the beginning with all the, the, the issues on copyright, and who owns the Curepedia software and all these other things. We happened to launch at uh, a time when a lot of questions had to be answered about where this concept of Wikitown is going. And unknown to us, we actually helped in answering some of the pertinent issues in terms of uh, copyright related to Curepedia and re related to the concept of uh, Wikitown. Because in our first year when we launched it, uh, someone decided uh, they were going to send us a letter of demand for copyright infringement, uh, which they believed that uh, we, were, we were infringing on the copyright of a guided cell phone tour around uh, heritage, um, heritage routes. We, we were able to write back to them and told them that A, we're not doing it for profit, so we're not copy organization, and B, we don't believe that there is any copyright infringement. Because uh, for their system, you'd have to get to a heritage site, call a cell phone number, and tell what the heritage site is about. 
and it will tell you where the next heritage site is. Uh, whereas we were using the uh, QR code um, technology, which has nothing to do with heritage um, tours, basically. So we were able to solve that one, and uh, that sort of uh, um, bolstered the case for Wikitowns and the fact that they could actually stand on their own in terms of being challenged as an intellectual property or a copyright uh, idea. So the first year of Jobipedia, we, we, we decided we were going to pilot it with 11 uh, sites in Johannesburg. Amongst them is the, uh, some of the famous sites we have in Johannesburg, the uh, Satyagraha House, which uh, Mahandas, uh, Mahatma Gandhi stayed in with his friend Kalimbaf in 1907 uh, to 08 and created his uh, passive resistance movement uh, in the house. So we've put in a QR code there. We've also gone to places like the Tutu House in Soweto. We've gone to the Orlando Stadium in Soweto. We've gone to other places which are a little bit obscured in history but had a lot to do with us getting to where we are as a democratic country in South Africa, like the uh, the Rahima, Rahima Musa House of the Women's uh, Movement uh, back in 1950. So we've, we've put in QR codes in 11 sites and uh, we've had good uh, interest from uh, public participants who came through to the events we arranged uh, for those sites. <coughs> I think one, one of the things that came out of Jogopedia was the collaboration between local authorities, uh, which would be the municipality, uh, the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, which is a uh, not-for-profit not foundation, but independent, uh, and they have been doing a lot of work and research on heritage around Johannesburg for the past 50 years. So they have lots and lots of archival material, which would be very interesting on Wikipedia. Getting to convince them that it's something worthwhile to partner with was uh, a bit of a headache. Firstly, to get permission to get to these sites in Johannesburg from the municipality it took some time to do it. Once we got the permissions, then you have to get permission from the actual house owners or site owners. And eventually, we managed to get 11 of them uh, going. Um, from the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, we did not get much in the first year because they were not quite sure exactly what is Wikipedia, uh, what are we trying to do and um, what are we going to do with their archives if they give them to us and are we going to sell them, are we for profit, uh, what kind of licensing can they put them in. Uh, they do not even consider whether the archives they have are even licensed uh, at all. So that took some time to convince them to say look we, we are an open source and, and a free movement. Uh, we don't believe in copyright, we believe in copy left, and uh, we had to, un to explain that through to them. That did bear fruits because on the second installment of, Johannes uh, of Jobipedia, which is this year, we finally got the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation to agree to partner with us uh, officially and let us uh, into the stash of archives, um, which then meant that we needed someone who would be full time at least have a lot of time based at their research center, going through their archives and seeing which one is good, which uh, material is good enough for Wikipedia, and teaching them how to do it. So I am very proud to, to announce that our first Wikimedian in residence as Wikimedia South Africa is Bobby Shabam, who is sitting right over there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, positioned uh, for the three three days of the week uh, for the next five months with Johannesburg Heritage Foundation and is going through their archives that they have and it's beautiful, beautiful archives that they have. Um, Bobby will talk a little bit more about this uh, on uh, Sunday, I believe, uh, during the Jobipedia uh, talk. But just a little bit, bit of a background on what it means for Jobipedia. The Johannesburg Heritage Foundation has personally tagged about 580 buildings in Johannesburg, in the city center. That's 580 historical buildings with, complete with pictures that are almost 60 years, dating 60 years back, and they have gone back to those buildings in the past 60 years 
in a period of five years, taking pictures and making sure that these buildings are known as heritage buildings. So that's the amount of archives that we are going to be accessing and putting onto Wikipedia under Creative Commons licensing, which is really, really good because they were not licensed uh, previously, so they were just stacked somewhere in the basement and nobody looked at these uh, archives. So we're very happy that they came through to the party. Besides the partnership we have with the Johannesburg Heritage Foundation, we continue with our editathons for Jobedpedia, which is one editathon a month for the next uh, five months. And uh, we have made good partnerships at each editathon that we go. And the, and the concept is simple. Find a, an organization which is doing something fantastic for heritage, partner with them, let's have an editathon at their building, let's write about the building when we're there. And it has, it has done a uh, very good work. In terms of statistics of who are attending our editathons, um, it is, it's, it's a very good thing to say that when we do have good attendance, at least 40% of the people who attend are female. And those who actually do edits way after the, the editor has gone through. So we're very happy about that. So that's Jovenpedia uh, in a nutshell. The second other thing that we've been very busy with, uh, which Douglas has talked about, is uh, this very conference that you are here today. It's taken a lot of our time and energy, and Teresa is almost falling over today. <laughs> uh, but I think we've done a good job uh, organizing that. So we are very happy about that. So, without wasting any further time, um, Douglas has said a little bit more about this, but we're just going to go a little bit into detail with it again. Where we are now as a chapter, we have secured the external funding from OSF to hire our first employee, who is Teresa. We are looking at the second round of that application and see if we can push them a little bit more money so we can get maybe the second employee um, going forward. We can focus on different things than what Teresa is uh, focusing on. We also have normalized our legal status and our tax register, which means uh, the taxman is half happy with us. Eventually, he will be fully happy with us and he will allow us to give tax rebates to people who give donations to us. Um, and we have enjoyed growing attention from media houses for some of our activities that we've done, and um, I like actually tell you a better story about um, the media uh, uh, attention that we've had from radio stations like Top Radio 702, uh, Cape Top 5, 6, 7. And we are also going to have an interesting um, interview with uh, 60 Minutes from the US uh, in August. So that's really awesome. Um, okay, we're going to run through this now. We're going to talk about challenges that we have. So, um, I would say our single biggest challenge as a community would be expanding the community. We expand the number of editors here in South Africa. Um, at the moment, there are um, just over 100 uh, editors, uh, consistent editors in South Africa. Um, the only uh, Check that number of sort of highly active editors in South Africa. And with that perspective, um, this, is a, this is about half the number that a country such as Colombia has got. Um, so we are about half as, as active as a country, which in many ways, demographically, economically, is very similar to us. So we've got a lot of work there in terms of trying to expand our membership and trying to expand the number of uh, active Wikipedians in South Africa and hopefully also on, on South African topics. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing um, all of these projects, but um, also specifically these editor thoughts, because um, I feel that the editor thoughts have got amongst the best track record of uh, exposing people to editing Wikipedia. Uh, and so it's, it's one of those things that are sort of in our control to sort of increase membership. Editors. Oh yes, uh, getting the African language wikis uh, up and running and supporting them. Uh, I, as as Ian, you know, tell you in, in one of the sessions later on this weekend. Um, 
I, I, I would oppose saying that um, we are no longer going to support a closet electric fear um, because we have made numerous attempts to, to give support and expand the number of editors or create any editors out of closet electric fear and had not been successful. Um, but no sooner had I said that than the number of edits in closet electric Wikipedia had increased by quite a lot. And um, it turns out what was happening there are two things. Um, the victim from the Wikimedia Foundation, he came over to uh, to the Story Art Center of High School. He got really interested in closet electric media, so creating articles there. Um, another thing that happened also is that the folks at St. John High School also set up an after school program. So they stayed on an hour, uh, one hour every Thursday after school to get a Wikipedia. Um, so a big, big thank you to Pete and Pam at St. John High School for, for making that happen. And that is also sort of increased content, the quality of content on closet electric media. Um, but I'm going to hand over the duty now to a bit more expansion on African language Wikipedia support. Um, before you hand over to Dumi, I'm um, asking that you quickly just work around the just the edges so that we can catch time because oh, speed yes. up. Yeah, speed up. Okay, uh, speed up. Um, in terms of uh, small local language languages in South Africa, they are almost non-existent basically. Um, if at all, there's one editor per language Wikipedia, and they're probably not that consistent either. So they, they, that is a big challenge for us, is to get more people editing, but to keep the same people who are editing to uh, keep them going. Uh, the other thing is to get the Indabere language Wikipedia up and running. It's been in the incubator, I believe, for some time, and almost should be getting out of the uh, incubator because nobody's engaged with it. Uh, but that's going to be a shame because it's the only African, uh, uh, it's the only local language we don't have uh, as a Wikipedia project in South Africa, so we'd like to change it. And the last thing is to avoid banning out from active board members. Uh, being board mem member of a Wikipedia media chapter like South Africa can be really taxing to one's um, uh, soul, I must put it that way. Um, it's a lot of things that we need to, to organize, a lot of meetings we need to do online, a lot of follow-ups we need to do with different people. Start, it starts taking over some uh, person's life and we need to find a way of uh, making sure that we who are still here as board members don't burn out and we we'll make, if, if there is transitions, we are, we are actually able to make those transitions uh, easier for the next uh, guys that are coming. Looking forward, uh, as, as Douglas said, we would like to achieve our public benefit uh, legal status. So that we can be able to give tax uh, incentives to people who give donations to us. Uh, we would like to get more employees, obviously, so that we could get more work done. Uh, we would also want to see at some point Kpedia uh, going in Cape Town and uh, another wiki done for next year. And uh, is it dreaming to say we would like to get Wikimania in 2016? Let's see. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any, any comments, uh, questions? Well, yes. we, before that, I just want to make a quick comment on chapters, project chapters. Um, so a lot of the projects that, that we have done um, wouldn't be nearly as successful if they didn't have champions to make them happen. So for example, Wiki Loves Monuments, Inheritors Western Cape, which has really stepped up to the plate for many levels um, in helping us out and making that event happen. And actually even, we've written an MOU with them that donated thousand rand to us to help make that event happen in the, in the province. Um, it turns out the CEO is a Wikipedian and is a huge fan, and so he's a tremendous champion. San Androngo High School, uh, Pam, and especially Pete at San Androngo High School, um, who volunteer their time to, to uh, show people how to edit Wikipedia and promote it there. Um, they're champions there, and that project would never have happened without the two of them. So really value your champions. Yes. I grow them. So, any, any questions? I will, I will do this because of time. Um, actually, I should punish these guys because they're taking a lot of time. And yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a, the, the questions as fun and then you're going to have to answer them just like that. So, noted, noted, noted. Start studying for a while. Uh, maybe I'll 
my mamas commend you for the wonderful job that you're doing in Johannesburg. But part of my interest is in the partnership that you have introduced with the heritage sites within your country. And I'm so glad that you managed to convince them and they managed to give you a go ahead. Uh, maybe I must say, this is one of the problems that we have been encountering with some of the heritage sites within our country or the organizations that are responsible for the heritage sites. Because most of their challenge is that they don't understand the reason why they should partner with uh, any project related to Wikipedia because of issues related to copyright. They think we need that stuff to sell them. So I want to understand how you managed to convince people who are responsible for these organizations to let them understand the importance of them partnering with you. Thank you. Yeah, I have uh, two questions and one comment. And the first comment uh, well, from the presentation, you seem to have touched in the balance or imbalance in the sense that there is a lot of participation from, from women. And I presume actually when you are mentioning tax man, you mentioned also tax women in Manchester. <laughs> that's a, that's a mere comment. On the other two issues, which I understand that if you are there in both Cape Town and in Durban, which is of course I think for us we want to know that the same day to be behind that that's a sense of the operation. Of course, on the other countries you see that actually the problem is uh, most of them have not been able to go beyond that where they are from the capitals. There's a lot that's challenge of not being able to go beyond the capitals not being actually able to attract other members of all the individuals who are involved in the other, in the other parts of the country. And maybe the last, uh, also we need to know in terms of what is the secret behind that to find us and that success. I think that is the reason that you brought us here the in the week in Dubai for the first time now. Uh, and then I also just wanted to mention Isla's uh, Wikiathon that she ran in February, and for youth day, which kind of got extended. My name is Shabalaga from Nigeria. I actually want to commend the good job you're doing in South Africa. But um, <coughs> to look at the way you transit from setting up your community, registered, and become an NPO. Now, and series of good jobs that you have done, what about where you see opportunity to go into doing some of these jobs like partnering with an NGH company, organizations, and getting some of these um, materials that you need to do your job? And you have not set up your chance. Is it going to be any form of challenges? Because, one, some of them may really want to see you as a